Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Buckeye Weekly Podcast. I am Tony Gerdeman, here as always with Tom Orr. Tom, how's it going? Tony, as my background from the time I dragged you to the Cheez-It Bowl in Phoenix a few years ago, obviously tells everyone it is time for some bold predictions about some really early bad bowl games. I cannot wait. I this was this was an ordeal, and hopefully it won't be an ordeal to listen to or talk about, but <laughs> trying to come up with stuff that is bold and yet um you know interesting it mm-hmm. was uh, certainly more than i had had anticipated but i i think we've done it i know i have done it i don't know if you have done it i know i have seven quite bold predictions you may have two or three we will have to discuss this as as we go on but first tom should we recap what happened during conference championship week and 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 who won that and and how we did well we didn't actually you never established who actually won because i i told you how many i had and then you didn't tell me how many you had which makes me think that your number is probably higher than my number so i think we should just go ahead and skip this and not worry about it i don't feel like that week is canon so i think we just move you know onward and upward forward to uh, the early bowl games but i'm, Tom, I'm guessing I, you disagree i don't think you're gonna want to want to skip this um mm. But first, let, let's talk about how you did. All right. So uh, I had Hassan Haskins under 45 rushing yards in the first 40 minutes. Unless my uh, addition was incorrect, uh, he ended up at 35. So that was a yes. Uh, the second one, I had initially said Iowa would be held to 3.9 yards per play or worse, which is an extremely bad number. How bad is it? Well, they were held to exactly 3.9 yards per play in the Big Ten Championship game. However, you thought, oh, no, 3.9 yards per play. That's like an explosive offense. And you made me change to 3.5. So I did not get that, even though I was exactly right beforehand. Uh, zero passing touchdowns in the Big Ten Championship game. Shakes fist at Donovan Edwards. Uh, they did have Michigan did have one later in the game. But uh, yes, that was that one was gone for me early. More than 780 yards of passing in the ACC championship game. I looked at those, the numbers and I'm like, is these, are these halftime stats? Because Pitt threw the ball a lot, I felt like, and then they only ended up in like 200. So no, didn't. I, I went back and had to listen to check something. And you said, this feels like a sure thing, which that is the exact moment I lost that, that bold prediction. Uh, I, I picked Oregon to do something positive against Utah. That was foolish. Never again. Uh, Aiden Hutchinson wins the MVP of the Big Ten championship game. Two points. Yes. So I'm at three. Uh, Georgia holds Alabama to negative rushing yards. Fortunately, we can't lose points for uh, bad predictions, so I'm still at three. Tony, how about you? Well, and that Aiden Hutchinson, he had one sack, and he get he has like what, four tackles, one sack, and gets the MVP because people are still so enamored from his Ohio State performance. Tom, as I get st- set to talk here, go ahead and look up the box score from the Conference USA Championship game. That way, uh, you can take a look at something for me, but. My first one, uh, both teams in the ACC championship game will exceed the Big Ten championship game over under. That did not happen. We were both burned by the uh, the ACC championship game. The Big Ten total points will be greater than Hassan Haskins' rushing yards. I missed that 45 to 56. So you you got your Hassan Haskins prediction. I did not. Tom, here's the one I want you to take a look at for me, and it's the Conference Mm -hmm. USA Championship game, and everybody out there could do the same thing for me. My prediction was that there will be a 17-yard touchdown, but if there's a 34-yard touchdown in the same game, Mm -hmm. it will negate that 17-yard touchdown. Can you you go through that uh, box score and and, uh, let the people know what happened? Uh, Well, let's see. If I can remember where on ESPN the uh, box scores or the the uh, touchdown or the they're in the, the game uh, cast. Okay, there we go. Found it. Up. Okay, yeah. all right. So there was a thirty-four yard field goal, mm-hmm. a seventeen yard touchdown, and a thirty-four yard thirty-four yard touchdown pass at the very end of the game. Jareth Stearns from Bailey Zappi, maybe the greatest thing a, a Jareth has ever accomplished in the history of this universe. Mm. No, so, so was, was that a no, Tony? What well, did you get? <laughs> I thought it was going to be a no. And as I'm going through all of the box scores, and, and that one came up right away, and I was just like, I was going to text you right away and be like, this is such bull crap. This is so <laughs> stupid. Then I was checking all of the box scores until I got to the MAC championship game, which was the last one listed. And there was a 17-yard touchdown in that game. And I was, I was glad to see it. 
because the other game that was that I had not yet checked was like USC and Cal. And I wasn't sure you're going to give me credit if that happened because that was not a conference championship game. Mm-hmm. That was just a game scheduled during a, a makeup game. But so, yes, I did get that one. So I got that one. Mm-hmm. point. My Jer- um, Jareth's now back to nothing. Yes. Uh, and, uh, and and I've got some Jareth Stern Stearns uh, um, coming up with our current bull prediction, but we'll get to mm-hmm. him later. So then uh, my fourth prediction was Kenny Pickett will throw six touchdowns for Pitt. He did not. He only threw two, which was a waste of my time. Uh, my fifth was <laughs> Houston beat Cincinnati by eight points. I don't recall if they, it may have only been a seven point Houston win. I cannot remember. Mm-hmm. Missed it by that much. <laughs> I've got one even worse than that, Tom. Oh, uh, my, my two pointer was Jameson Williams, uh, a touchdown of at least 60 yards. He had a 67 yarder. Mm-hmm. So that gives me three points. My three pointer was Oregon beats Utah by 18 points or more. Mm. So they? But I don't I don't remember. My original three pointer was just that uh Oregon wins and you d- you thought that was way way not bold enough time. So <laughs> you were even more off than I was. So so we finished we with tied? three points. Yes. We tied. So do we have to split the cod of shame? Or well, we we may have it. Well, we've got another week coming. So we've got and there that's really too much weight to put on these games. <laughs> I, I gotta be honest with you. <laughs> Um, but let's get started. Uh, do you want to go first? You want me to go first? How do you want to do this? Sure, I'll let you. I'll let you go first. You okay. go right ahead. And, and first of all, let me just say that I was I was meticulously combing through the Army Missouri thing. I had a lot of thoughts on Army Missouri, and then realized that was one day after the bowl games we're talking about today. So I have <laughs> I've done a little work ahead for next time. But I was deeply disappointed for this time. We are just going through the bowl games on the twenty first of December, and then we'll do. You know, the the ones after that uh, sometime next week. Thank you, Tom, for setting that table for everybody. My first one uh, from the Tail Greeter Care Bowl. Tony, they're they're not paying us to say the name of the sponsor. Therefore, we don't need to say the name of the sponsor. But, Tom, I don't know which one is the sponsor and which one is the bowl name. It's just the Care Bowl, Tony. (laughs) Uh, Because I have written Care Bowl. So I'm going with the Care Bowl (laughs) rather than the Care Bowl. Um, And also, I don't know what Tail Greeter is. uh, but. It's Coastal Carolina versus Northern Illinois. Tom, uh, Grayson McCall, Coastal Carolina quarterback, has thrown 23 touchdowns with just three interceptions this season. He leads the nation in pass efficiency. 23 touchdowns, three interceptions. Mm-hmm. Northern Illinois has given up 23 passing touchdowns this season and only come up with three interceptions. Isn't that crazy? Is that, <laughs> that, is that, that, is that a neat coincidence? That is crazy. And, and you're going to, you're going to be hearing a lot about coastal Carolina on this show. So uh, get ready, get ready to hear about some uh, teal chickens. Go ahead, Tony. So my first bold prediction, Grayson McCall will throw an interception in this game. It's something he has done three times this year. That's it. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, all of those three interceptions for Northern Illinois came in two games. I could look, but I think it's bold enough as I am. Oh, absolutely. Yes. If, if they only have, uh, if they've only picked off three passes all year and he's only thrown three picks all year. Yep. That's a good one. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tony, you, what is my favorite well to go back to that never, ever works out for me? 220, 220. Tony, we're going way better than that because our teal, our teal chicken friends from, uh, from uh, where are they from Myrtle beach? No Hilton Myrtle beach. Yes. Our teal chicken friends from, from Myrtle beach have only gone for 276, 276 one time this season, Tony coastal Carolina rushes for at least 276 yards passes for at least 276 yards on, uh, in the cure bowl against Northern Illinois. Now why 276? Well, they mm-hmm. did 275, 275 twice. So bumping it up one, because if I said 275, you'd make me bump it up anyway. So I figured I might as well just bump it up. 276, 276, Coastal Carolina against Northern Illinois. Yeah, I'm just looking to see who, who they've done it against. They did it at Arkansas State. And they also did it to uh, Louisiana Monroe and, and yeah. didn't do it by a lot. No, d- d- yeah, two, two bad teams. That, that uh, Yeah, Arkansas State is way down this year. And uh, ULM was good for ULM, but good for ULM is still pretty bad. So. So I, um, I'm not going to argue with this one, unfortunately, and, and maybe this is just a product of, uh, we, we had to kind of stretch out beyond our boundaries in terms of uh, our, our comfort levels. And, um, and then also maybe we, we've gone too bold, Tom, because I would have given you 210, honestly, but, <laughs> but no. All right. Seven points. All right. Good. <laughs> 276, 276. 
for the shots. All right. Okay. All right. It's, it's, it's in ink now. Virtual ink. My next one, Tom, from the uh, Boca Raton Bowl, Sands sponsor, mm-hmm. although it is roofclaim, roofclaim.com, not cliffclaven.com, <laughs> roofclaim.com. Bailey Zappi, quarterback from Western Kentucky, will throw for at least 455 yards, thereby giving him a season total of at least 6,000 yards on the season. Now, he has thrown for at least 455 yards a few times this year. How how many is a few? Well, Tom, I would have to go back and look, and I don't know (laughs) that I can get back to that page. (laughs) Now, um, let me just bring it up real quick. And who who are they playing again, Tom? I didn't write all of this stuff down. I wrote they some of it down. They are playing. I can come up with is this. Is it Northern Illinois? No, that's no, who. Uh, that's, okay. Yeah. They uh, are playing uh, uh, App State. App State. So a, a good team. I think we would agree with that. I completely agree with that. Bailey Zappi, 455 yards. Uh, let's see. He did it one, two, three, four, five times. So now. Is that a lot? No. I mean, in the grand scheme of things, is five a lot compared to 100? No, it's not. So um, I'm saying at least 455 yards. He's got 55, 45 this year so, so far. So he did, he, did, he did this five times. He accomplished this in nearly half of his games this year. Is that what I'm hearing? And you'd like Almost a little bit more than a third of his games. Okay, Let's, so so how many, how, many, uh, how many do we have to go up to to get to? He only did this twice this year. Because that oh, would feel okay. fairly right. old. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> is, it, is it a bunch? Because I feel like no, no. He's okay. only gone above four eighty nine twice. Okay, four eighty nine. So, it is forty nine. Okay. And and I was uh, I, I spent a lot of time. One of the things I spent a lot of time looking uh, about was their uh, Western Kentucky's offensive coordinator is leaving to go to Texas Tech. Crap. I was well. Hang on, because I was all ready to go in, go in hard on Western Kentucky. He's not going to mm-hmm. do that well. He's going to be there, however, for the uh, for the bowl game. So, that, from everything I can tell, he's going to be there for the bowl game. So, yeah, I was all, I was all ready to uh, short uh, Western Kentucky stock, and then he's still there. So, well, I, and, I, I was not ended up not doing that. And some of my concern with this is kind of rushing into this and then predicting somebody who's in the portal. You know, like <laughs> I've got a quarterback yeah. here that I'm expecting something from, or this guy's already opted out because you know. Mm-hmm. He, yeah, I, I, had, I, I Jake Jake Hayner from Fresno State is someone mm-hmm. who I I was already because I think Fresno State if you know if they actually play all their people is going to just annihilate. Uh, now I'm forgetting who they're playing in their bowl game, but they are uh, oh UTEP, yeah UTEP, which is a great story. But holy Moses, they are going to get they're going to get murder balled by Fresno State if Fresno State wants to be there. I was all ready to pick Jake Hayner because Jake Hayner is coming back to Fresno. But it's sort of unclear whether he's playing in the bowl game or if someone else is going to start for him. Or it's, so it's just he, uh, yeah, he was in the portal, then came back. He was in the portal, then came back to Fresno State. So and issued a uh, emotional, uh, heartfelt two minute video apology uh, to all of his teammates and the Fresno State community. But uh, that's uh, that's the challenge of these bowl games. Is it's just it's like in a normal regular season game, I could tell you absolutely what what I think is going to happen. Now it's like well. How does the quarterback leaving in the portal then coming back in the portal? Uh, how does that impact team morale, team preparation, what have you for this game? And the answer is, oh, mm-hmm. oh. Mm-hmm. so yeah, so that's that's fun. So yes, there there are a couple of these that I'm I'm also like, well, this could go one of two ways, one of two very different ways. Uh, my next one: only two non-power five teams held Kent State under 196 yards passing. Iowa, Texas A&M were the others. Iowa, Texas A&M, both pretty good defenses this year. Only two other teams held them under 196 yards passing. One of them was Akron, which held them under 196 yards by being extremely bad and uh, Kent State not needing to pass the ball. Tony, however, Wyoming holds them under 196 yards passing in the Idaho Potato Bowl. And if you're looking at weather, weather is okay. It looks like 42 degrees or so and, you know, cloudy but decent. Um, yeah, and... I I did also look at that game and the the weather I got was in the 30s, but maybe it's 39, maybe it's 42, maybe it's 35. It's going it, to be not, all of those. It's not going to be 15 degrees and snowing sideways unless something dramatically changes, which is 
because I, I didn't want, I didn't want you to think I was trying to trick you with, mm-hmm. uh, and they're going to play this game inside a snow globe. Like, no. Well, it, it's interesting because I also have a, a Dustin Crum uh, prediction of he, he is Kent State's quarterback. So I guess you're going under 196 passing. Um, I'm going the other way in a sense. So I don't, I don't know. Can I, can I logically, I guess I could say that's, I, I think he's going to do much better than that. So uh, is yours really bold when you're underselling how good he is and I'm overselling it? I mean, w- really, where is the boldness there? Unless you go to um, under 185. Under 185? I think I've, ma- I've maybe closed my uh, Kent State season statistics tab. Oh, that so, right? Did you? Yes. Oh, that's too bad. Um, um, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. If you're taking the opposite position, then mine is inherently bold. So therefore. Oh, no, because I am going bold. You're going average, mm. but I'll tell uh, you what, Tom, I'll leave it. I'll go. I'll, mm-hmm. We'll allow it. Um, 196 okay. Okay. and hope for some goodwill along the way. As we go through this show, <laughs> not expecting <laughs> not. any of it though. Probably, Probably not. not. Go on. <laughs> so my third one is also a, a famous Idaho potato wall. Dustin crumb will have at least 327 yards of total offense. Now, how many yards rushing does he get in a typical? Well, first of all, how many yards of, uh, of well, he, total offense does he get in a typical week? Here's why I I, I originally went with 347 because that is uh, one that is 0. 0.3 yards more than uh, Wyoming normally gives up total to anybody. But then when you undersold what Dustin Crumb could do, I thought, well, I'm going to go 327. Tom's not going to know the difference. I'll pull one over on him. And I, and I think I have done that successfully, but Crum you know, he he can rush for a hundred yards. He can rush for he had like five yards two games ago, but he has that potential. So I think there's um you know it, it could be a, a 230, 100 type of game. So I'm saying three twenty seven yard three hundred twenty seven yards of total offense. Tom, how about you? So he's rushed for six hundred and thirty three. He averages basically fifty yards a game rushing, mm-hmm. and he averages. 224 yards a game passing. So oh, that's a pretty good number. 275. Okay. So he is, so you're, you're predicting him to go 50 over that number. That's pretty good. Mm, 327. Pretty good. In bad weather. I think we've established the bad weather. <laughs> I think we've established it isn't bad weather. I'll tell you what, your original number is going to be 347, right? So now we'll, you said 327. I'll meet you in the middle and say 337 yards. All right. I still think that's too high. I also think 327 is too high now that you're, um, you're, you're trying to well, convince now that me that, now that, that we're, um, he's not going to be good. Now that that's in stone, uh, Tony, you want to guess where Wyoming ranks in opponent yards per pass attempt this year? They're, they're pretty high up there in the, uh, the, the defensive rankings, if I recall. The uh, yard, am I right? Yes, yards per yards per uh, pass attempt, they are six point zero, tied with Michigan, yeah. or sixth best in the country. Now they haven't played many many teams, obviously, and not that Kent State is some you know, world beater, but I think he can keep some drives alive, and and maybe it might be a half and half type of thing with them, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, that that sort of thing. Just something to watch. It's got to be bold, right, Tom? Like it I does have to be. be it it does know. have to be bold. All right, so uh, BYU. Averages 8.7 yards per pass this season. Good for 16th in the nation. That's pretty good. 8.7 yards per pass. UAB averages 8.9 yards per pass. Good for 12th in the nation. Both, both teams, Tony, do at least 1.0 yards per pass better than their season averages in the Independence Bowl. Hmm, That's pretty interesting, Tom. Let me go look and see how they do defensively because that's really... They're, so talking, they're they're both kind of middle of the pack. They're both yeah, BYU I, and, and who are they yeah, playing? UAB. UAB. Hmm. The Independence Bowl brought to you by Letters. Um, hmm. Yeah, I mean, okay, because yeah, they are both middle of the pack defensively. Now they're both UAB and BYU defensively, so that kind of <laughs> takes some of the luster off of that. But I could see one and not the other, where maybe BYU's defense can this hold is, UAB. Yeah, this is this is one of the things I've learned this year is that if you predict both teams to do something, mm-hmm. either one of them can hose you. So just picking just, one team to do something, very fun. Picking, picking one to exceed expectations is 
like, oh, that's that's interesting. And then you pick both. It's like, oh, wow, there's so many ways this could go wrong. So, okay, so BYU and UAB both, you say one point, what'd you say? 1.0. 1. 1. Yes. Both do at least 1.0 yards per pass better than the, their season averages. So BYU 9.7, UAB 9.9. 9. Okay. All right. I, I, I will go along with that one. I, I don't, um, I don't have the energy to argue about BYU and UAB. Unfortunately, maybe in September I could, but now I cannot. My fourth one, Tom, which uh, involves arguably the most dominating player in sports today. San Diego State punter Matt Ariza will not have more than one 50-yard punt in the Frisco Bowl. Mm -hmm. Now, he averages like 52 yards a kick. I'm saying he will only have one, if any. The stage yeah. is bright. This is mm-hmm. very few bigger bowls in this one. I, I just don't. I don't know that he's going to have it. That is very interesting. And that that you know, if you are not familiar with Matt Arise's, uh, uh curriculum vitae this year, he is uh, basically the magic man in punting. He has had one punt of fifty yards or more in every single game this season. Uh, <laughs> he is. Now, his numbers have tailed off a little bit towards the end of the year. He uh, is only averaging, uh, let's see, averaging 47 and a half, 47 and a half, and 49 in his last three games. But uh, yeah, I, that is in and of itself a, a bold prediction because I think we're going to, I've got some thoughts on that game as well a little later on. Okay. I think that's going to be a little low scoring ish. So plenty of I'll, opportunities, uh, plenty of opportunities to punt. And he is, yeah, he is constantly booming 50 yarder so that is that is a bold that is a bold prediction yes i will give it to you and that's uh if he puts one like 55 yards into the end zone that's uh you know we're talking net uh, you know, just so <laughs> no, you know no no we're not no we, in fact we are not <laughs> um all right next one there are six games six being played on saturday they are the book return bowl between western kentucky and app state the New Mexico Bowl between Fresno State and UTEP, the Independence Bowl between BYU and UAB, the Lending Cree Bowl between Eastern Michigan and Liberty, the LA Bowl between Utah State and Oregon State, and the New Orleans Bowl between Mar- Marshall and Louisiana. There are a lot of good offenses, Tony, playing that day. Would you agree with me? Uh, there are uh, no. There, are, Tom. You look at these over unders. There's, there's the 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 Western Kentucky Appalachian State. That's that's one. Um, Utah State and Oregon State is the only other game where the over under is in the sixties. So let's uh, let's slow it down, Tom. Tony, no one hits forty points in any of those six games on Saturday. I've got twelve teams, some of which mm-hmm. have good offenses, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. major conference team, some teams playing bad defenses. No one hits forty points in any of the six games on Saturday. I, I will. I will. I just want you to think about something. The very first game, eleven a.m. at the Boca Raton Bowl, Western Kentucky. I could lose this. I could lose this by the middle of the third quarter of an 11 a.m. game. Think about the joy you would feel sending me a text at 1.30 in the afternoon on Sunday, Saturday, going, nice pick, dummy. Here, here's the thing, and, and I'm going to allow this just because the bowl games themselves are unpredictable. A lot of times it's just mm-hmm. very sluggish, and it, it, you expect more scoring than there is. However, there are also times where it's you know ends up 70 to 3 because – who knows why? Like one team doesn't want to be Correct. there, the other does, and you, you can't even stop anything. So there's a, there. I mean, there are what we're talking twelve opportunities here. Correct for somebody to score forty points. So, um, I will allow it. Uh, it's is it overly bold? No, but that's not the that's not the title of the show. These aren't <laughs> overly bold predictions until we get to the bonuses. Mm-hmm. And again, the just the overall nature of bowl games and the unknowable of them you know i'm i'm not gonna be a stickler for that right now and be like oh you know 34 points would i would i prefer 37 yes but i'll allow 40 it's a nice smooth even number and we can go from there i allow it as always begrudgingly uh so no 40 pointers on saturday that is exactly what you said right yes Tom, my fifth one. Do you know how yes. many roughly putt putt courses there are at Myrtle Beach? 
how many putt putt courses there are in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. I've never been to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, but as a beach town and a tourist town, I'm going to guess the answer is like 12. Oh, it's, a, no, no. <laughs> it's more like 50. Wow. Um, it's, it's a long stretch of road. There are plenty of, uh, of putt putt courses. Uh, so this is a Myrtle Beach prediction, Myrtle Beach Bowl. Interestingly enough, when I start to type in how many putt putt courses, Google then fills out at Myrtle Beach. Like <laughs> that was the predictive. It's like, how did you know? Uh, do I do a lot of go- Googling about Myrtle Beach? Who doesn't? So, Tom, 50 putt putt courses. And in honor of that, and the, the Myrtle Beach Bowl is between uh, Tulsa and some other team. Old Dominion. Old Dominion says ODU. Uh, three Tulsa Golden Hurricane players will rush for at least 50 yards in this game. Now, they have kind of a three-person attack where they do <laughs> use a third person back a lot, but I don't know that they've hit 50 yards each in any of those games, and it's been a while since some of their running backs have. So um, I, I, I saw that, and I was just trying to find a way to incorporate 50 and this was the best way to do it. The, the line itself is like 51 and a half. And I didn't figure you'd let me, you know, say under 50 or something of that nature or over 50, because that's right where the line is. So I'm saying uh, three players will rush for at least 50 yards for Tulsa in this one. Pretty bold. Uh, Tony, I'm going to read you the average yards per game of yes. their top three rushers. Ready? Mm-hmm. 70, 76.83, mm-hmm. 53.33. 47.36. Tony, you're predicting one guy to go for two and a half yards more than he uh, does in an average game and everyone else is doing exactly what they do in a normal game. Right. But Tom, I mean? do you know how many I mean? times, uh, yes, but do you know how many times they have hit those averages in the same game? And if they did it again, it would still be under. So I would again be bold in, in this prediction. <laughs> I, do, I don't know the answer, but I'm definitely going to need more than 50 on those three guys. I think we need to have 57 yards, 57 yards for three different guys on the ground. Because here's the, here's the other thing. There is a guy who played in one game who also averaged 58. So you might get the weird one off. I will go. Uh, 54. I'll move it up to 54 in honor of the four times that I've been to Myrtle Beach. Including my trips to North Myrtle Beach. This is just a one. This is just a one pointer, right? Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. All right. How about this? How about this? Okay, no, no. You said all right. So I'm I'm gonna shave. I'm gonna shave. uh, I'm gonna shave my uh, next one down a little bit. To uh, no. Yeah, that's fine. All right. Uh, So 54 yards. We said three guys with 54 yards rushing. It's never happened, but it's it's apparently uh, 50 yards has never happened this season for any of those guys all at the same time. But apparently, it's too much for Tom. (laughs) They they literally average that much. Averaging is not the same thing as doing Tom. That's the why they call it the average. Is that why they call it the? And here's the fun thing: Could I tell you the health current health status or opt out status of Shamari Brooks? Anthony Watkins or Denerick Price? Prince, Nobody I can. Sure, I sure could not. That's fine. 54. And you're still being a stickler. <laughs> we don't fine. even know if those guys are still enrolled. <laughs> All right. So, Tony, we've established six games on Saturday. Yeah. This is, I, I was, I was one short, and this is when I looked at my WWGD bracelet. What would Gerd do? And I thought, no one will score a touchdown of more than 110 yards. And I thought, no, I need to be more bold than what Gerd would do. Tony, no one scores a touchdown in any game on Saturday of 35 to 38 yards. No, that's, that's not bold. That's, you'd have to give me, uh, like, you'd have to give me the other 96 yards rather than just those four yards for me to, can, you know, like, no. Like no, so so, so no, you're, you're only you're, they only score in these four yards. Is, is basically they, they, they only score thirty five to thirty eight yard touchdowns in six different games on one day. No, no like th- there has to or you know there has to be a a thirty five to thirty eight yard touchdown rather than there will be none. Okay, that's fine. I will take there will be one touchdown of thirty five to thirty eight yards on Saturday. Done. 
why does it seem that that's very likely to happen? So the opposite would have been bold. Hmm, no, that's strange. I, I, I'll tell you no. what, you can, you can pick which one it is. It is, it does or does not happen. I will allow you to pick whichever one you'd like. I don't like either of these, Tom, because now you're making me choose. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, am. Because, I, <laughs> you know, I don't like it when people make me bleed my own blood, as we have said on this show. So uh, you're saying either a 35 to 38, 38 year touchdown or neither a 35 to 38 year touchdown. And I and feel that one of these is more likely than the other. Now, the fun thing is now you have to figure out which one I think is more likely. Well, no, because that, that's, that's kind of a wheelhouse, but it's not a big wheelhouse. It's a very, it's a house for very narrow wheels. I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to go neither. No, uh, well, no, wait, 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 no, wait. Yeah. There it, will be none from the 30 to 35 to 38. Is that what the original one was? That's what the original one was that you were like, how dare, first of all, how dare you, sir? And now that's the one you've picked for me because listeners, I think we all know what this means about Tony and his forthrightness. In this we don't need to talk about it, Tom. <laughs> People know. People know you, you, yes. Okay. All right. There we go. No one scores a touchdown of 35 to 38 yards in any of the six bowl games on Saturday. And you know, the really funny thing, my WWGD bracelet, I did exactly what Gerd ended up doing. The bracelet works, Tony. Don't question the bracelet. I don't like this one <laughs> at all because it's a 50 50. So, how can a 50 50 be a bold thing, though? You know? How is it? How is it fifty fifty? I think it is very. Un, I think it is fairly unlikely that that you have a uh, a touchdown from that that particular narrow stretch. I think that's fairly unlikely. So I think this is the more bold of the two. That no one scores a touchdown of thirty. No one scores a touchdown. I think that one is more bold. Yes. At this point, I'm. I mean, you, you've you've tricked me into something. I don't know what it is. Broken your brain and your spirit. It's time, <laughs> yes. Tony. It's time for the bonus questions. Two points. Okay. This got to be the point where I I, I was running out of time, mm -hmm. and and so you just got to throw something up against me. Like you, you just got to start writing and, and try to fill out that blue book on that that uh, essay exam. A bowl game will uh, will go uh, plus twenty over the over under. In this plus next week, twenty. Well, you know what? That's funny. I was just going to pull up some over unders and see because I wanted and to make sure I was. I don't know which it's going to be. Uh, couldn't tell you that time. Don't ask. Plus but... twenty. Let's see. In the, are we? Are we? Can we limit it to the to just Saturday rather than a full week of bowl games? Because that's because no. <laughs> no, you're asking for one, two, three, four, five, mm -hmm. six, seven, like eight, 10? nine, ten, eleven, eleven bowl games. Mm -hmm. That's not many. That's a regular slate of games. Mm -hmm. It's just easy. Plus mm -hmm. 20. That's a lot. You know, that's a lot. That, that, that almost, I don't know. It's, ha uh, it's happened four times this year. <laughs> I feel like that's probably not true. I feel like that may be an unofficial number. <sighs> See, the problem is, you know, I think the first game of the season, like the, the first game of the bowl season, uh, it's only 51 and a half points in the Bahamas Bowl. I think Toledo might light Middle Tennessee up. So I think you might, you might have that in game one. So, and the other one that I think is a real possibility also happens on Friday. Frankly, I think you could, you could do for two points for two points. I think you need to either pick just the Saturday games or 24 points. If this was a one pointer, I would have no problem with it, but for two points, I think you need to, I think, I think the listener, Tony, I think the listeners deserve a little more. Oh, really? Is, I don't hear any listeners clamoring for 24 points. It's I will go. That, that's because podcasts don't work that way. They, you can't hear them. I'll go 22 and a half. Fine. 22 and a half it is. Tony, my two-pointer. Coastal Carolina outscores the total score of both teams in the Frisco Bowl. So UTSA and San Diego State. Coastal Carolina alone outscores their to the total in that game, the over-under in that game, 50 and a half. And the over-under in the Coastal Carolina game is... Uh, 63 and a half, and it's a, they're a 10 and a half point favorite. So they're, they're expected to score like 30, 
five or so. And uh, I think they're going to, I think they're going to outscore the team total of both teams in the Frisco bowl. Hmm. Cause um, yeah. Yeah. I feel like this is a one pointer to me. This because you, you even said earlier in, in the show that you think UTSA San Diego State's going to be a low scoring game. So you tipped your hand there. That was your first yes. mistake. Yes, but the bookmakers don't think it's going to be a particularly low scoring game. So I've got 49 and a half on ESPN. I don't know what to tell you, Tom. 50 and a half that you're talking about, that's way out there. That is way high. So I, I, you might want to get your numbers checked there. I will allow, I, I, you're, you're going to say they're, they're going to outscore the entire score for that game. Just goes to Carolina. will score more than San Diego State and UTSA combined. Uh, I, I need that to be uh, by three points or more. Great. So by three points or more. Okay. That's fine. I'll do that by three points or more. Okay. All right. Fair enough. All right. And my three pointer going back to the Boca Raton Bowl and Western Kentucky. Mm hmm. Wide receiver Jareth Stearns, who led the nation in receiving yards this season, will go for at least 250 yards. The season high this year is 221. He's only done that once, obviously, but he's only gone over 200 once, only gone over 195 once. I'm saying 250 in this one. And uh, that's, uh, that's a remarkably bold number. Would put him at, uh, you know, he, he's going to be close. He has a shot to get 2,000. He's only 282 yards away. It's not a good shot, but I'm saying 250, and, and he's going to make it close. I'm going to pull up his game log right now, and we're going to save. He had 28 yards receiving two weeks ago against Marshall, 179 last week against the UTSA or two weeks ago. Has gone oh, yeah. under 100 four times this year. The good news is that I finally remembered where I heard the name Jareth before. That was from uh, Arrested Development. There was uh, Michael's Michael's cover name was Jareth Cute Story at some point uh, when he was trying to pick up a girl. I was like, I know that I've heard the name Jareth before somewhere, and I know it was somewhere very stupid. And, and my hope was. here is that he has not opted out, obviously. <laughs> the eternal hope. Well, Tony, I've got to tell you, uh, the uh, sportsreference.com page for, for uh, Jarrah Stearns mm -hmm. has been uh, disappointingly uh, short of stats, which is really killing me right now. So what, what do you uh, need to know? I've got his page up right now on cfbstats.com. Give, give me his top three receiving games this season. Top three. It was 221 against Old Dominion, mm -hmm. 195 against UTSA, and 179 or 186 uh, at Michigan State. 17 catches in that game. Okay. And they are playing... Against whom? They are playing against um, Appalachian State. So you're talking Appala about Appalachian, a pass defense. Yes, Appalachian State is 31st in the nation it can, mm -hmm. in uh, opponent yards per pass attempt. So I will allow it. That is good. I, I was worried that this was going to be, uh, no. you know, they're not secret, facing the Buckeyes. Secret number. <laughs> Tony, Tony, again, the listeners deserve better. Um, Note that I didn't say who the listeners deserve better from. That was the sneaky part of that. All right. Uh, so, yes, I will allow it 250 yards for Jareth Cute story. Uh, my three-pointer, Tony, the margin of victory in the Cure Bowl. Again, I'm, I'm, I am pushing all my chips in on Coastal Carolina. Margin of victory in the Cure Bowl is bigger than the margins of the Boca Patron Bowl, the New Orleans Bowl, the Frisco Bowl, the Potato Bowl put together. That's a lot, Tom. Um, I'm going to allow that just right off the. I, I, um, this is, this goes back that's, to, that's a lot. This goes back to the, uh, the thing I talked about earlier where it's like, I only need one of these themes to screw it up. Like Coastal Carolina could screw it up by only winning by three points or something like that. But any of those other bowls, if someone just no shows and loses by 30 mm -hmm. points, like I'm out. And that's four bowl games. So, so you, the, the Coastal Carolina, 10 and a half point favorite. Mm -hmm. You're saying their margin of victory, their margin of than... victory, yes, will be greater than the margins of victory in the Boca Raton Bowl, which we just talked about, Western Kentucky, App State, and I think, I mean, th those are two offenses that I think mm -hmm. you know you could you could get a 14, 17 point margin there. 
New Orleans Bowl, which is Marshall, Louisiana, which is another one that how does Louisiana feel with Billy Napier leaving for Florida? Are they going to be way into it or are mm-hmm. they going to be way out of it? Mm-hmm. The Frisco Bowl, which is uh, not to be confused with the Frisco Classic that UTSA San Diego <laughs> State uh, and the Potato Bowl, which is uh, Wyoming and Kent State. Yeah, I, uh, I can't can't dispute this one at all, Tom. I, I would I would have let you just take two of those, but um, that, that's fine. I actually had the Independence Bowl in there originally too, just because just as as a as, uh, <laughs> just as a uh, like he's gonna he's gonna d- demand an no. extra one and no, I mean that's four games. I mean I it is four games. It is this is one of these that is so much bolder than it seems on its face because of how many different things. It's like hitting a you know a five team parlay. Mm-hmm. You need mm-hmm. you need all of these things to happen exactly this way. No. So I like this one. Good. It's outside the box. It's what the listeners deserve. And I'm glad you finally stepped up and given them some, given them something uh, because that's not usually what you're, you, you do. Uh, Tom, anything else before we go? I feel like, I hope everybody understands how much time and effort we put into this. I spent a lot of time looking at <laughs> UAB football stats, like a lot of time. Like I had no opinions on old dominion before now. I have opinions on Old Dominion now, and I didn't even use any of them. But this is this is uh, normally these are you know Tony and I follow Ohio State relatively closely, obviously. So putting together the Ohio State over unders or Ohio State bolt predictions is like okay. We go in with a sense. It's like I have no opinions on Old Dominion football at all, but I'm I'm going to have to develop some very quickly. So yeah, this is uh, but this is fun, and and uh, bowl season is one of those inherently unpredictable things where depending on does the team want to be there. Does the do, or they have do they have players opting out? Do they have coaches leaving? All of this makes it very very unpredictable. It makes it very challenging to put these together. And the first bowl game kicks off on Friday, so um, enjoy what you want to enjoy, and let others enjoy what they want to enjoy, and let's all just be happy that there is still football going on. So that will do it for this edition of Bold Predictions. We want to thank you all for joining us. Thank you for tuning in. And uh, next show we got coming up, we're just looking at kind of previewing, predicting some Ohio State signees and maybe what we see from them. So look forward to that. And we will talk to you guys later. Thank you.